Hello. Today we are here to talk and learn about the high altitude simulation testing. Frequently, we are asked by our patients with pulmonary comorbidities if they are safe to travel, but we don't always know exactly what to tell them. By learning about this infrequently used test, we can help provide the safest recommendations for our patients. Every year, millions of Americans travel on airplanes. The Federal Aviation Administration has mandated that cabin pressure be capped at 8,000 feet, which is the equivalent of 15.1% oxygen. The body has a normal physiologic response to this. It increases its minute ventilation mainly by increasing its tidal volume, and it improves VQ mismatch via hypoxic-induced vasoconstriction and by increasing its cardiac output, mainly by increasing the heart rate. However, patients with pulmonary disease have a difficult time maintaining these normal physiologic responses. The inability to do this can lead to severe neurological, pulmonary, and cardiac complications. For patients with pulmonary disease who ask if it is safe to travel, it is important to ask them if they are flying or if they are traveling to an area at high altitude where there is concern that they might desaturate. The British Thoracic Society provides guidelines to help answer this question. They recommend obtaining an SpO2 on the ground. If it is greater than 95%, then no further testing needs to be done. If the SpO2 is less than 92%, then they should travel with supplemental oxygen regardless. If the SpO2 is between 92 and 95%, then further testing needs to be done, such as performing a high altitude simulation test. To perform HAS testing, you need a gas concentration with 15% oxygen mixture. You also need a patient that will be hooked up to continuous pulse ox so that you can monitor heart rate and SpO2 throughout the testing. In addition, they need to be hooked up to a nasal cannula so you can supply supplemental oxygen if necessary. Finally, a non-rebreather with the 15% oxygen mixture will be placed over the patient's mouth. With the 15% oxygen flowing, the patient's heart rate and SpO2 will be monitored continuously, with the goal to keep an SpO2 greater than 88%. If necessary, supplemental oxygen will be added in at 1 liter per minute to keep that SpO2 greater than 88%. After the patient has been breathing the 15% oxygen mixture for 20 minutes, an arterial blood gas should be obtained. If the patient needed oxygen titration during testing to keep the SpO2 greater than 88%, then prescribe that amount of oxygen for air travel. If the testing was performed without supplemental oxygen, the need for an oxygen prescription is based off the PaO2. If the PaO2 is greater than 55 millimeters of mercury, the test is considered negative and there is no need for supplemental oxygen. If the PaO2 is less than 50 millimeters of mercury, the test is considered positive and the patient needs supplemental oxygen prescribed prior to travel. If the PaO2 is between 50 and 55 millimeters of mercury, the test is borderline and further high altitude simulation testing with minimal exertion is warranted. To perform exercise testing, the patient should be walking on a treadmill or pedaling on a bicycle ergometer with minimal resistance while continuously monitoring their heart rate and SpO2. The purpose of this is to simulate the patient walking around the cabin during flight to make sure they do not become symptomatic. Oxygen should be titrated by 1 liter a minute to keep the SpO2 greater than 88%. If the patient requires oxygen to do this, then they should be prescribed that amount of oxygen for air travel. If they do not require oxygen to keep the SpO2 greater than 88%, then they do not require oxygen for travel. If the patient requires a prescription for oxygen, it should have the diagnosis and the amount of oxygen required during the flight. The patient should also check with the airline for further requirements prior to travel and to make sure that they have an approved portable oxygen concentrator. If at any point during testing the patient develops respiratory, cardiac, or neurological symptoms, or if they are requiring more than 6 liters of supplemental oxygen to maintain an SpO2 greater than 88%, testing should be stopped. Thank you for listening. Today we learned about the appropriate indications and interpretations for high altitude simulation testing.